and as God is setting us up for 2012, because we know that 12 is government. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. And so what God is doing, he's crescendoing um, the Gentiles and the Jews together. And in this year, he's finding out who's tough. Okay. Right. Uh, well, he's finding out who, who wants to endure who wants to outlast the skeptics in the name of Jesus. Because many people base your blessing off your your career, your clothes, your your crib, your car, or your pearls. And I want you to understand that God is not intimidated by those things because he's about to do something incredible in the lives of the people of God tonight. And so the key word here, when I read um, this six. 6 chapter verse 9, it says, let us not be weary and well doing, but for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. And so shrouded in this word is a word called perseverance. Yeah. And one of, the, and one of the things the enemy is hoping that you will not preserve, hallelujah. Right. Now we growing up, praise God, in the country, I found out that grandma used to make preserves and had these mason jars. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, and what she would do is she would put the preserve in the jar and then put this little rubber apparatus on it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then she would pop it to seal it yeah. so it wouldn't get spoiled. Yeah. And see, many of you don't understand that when God saved you, he sealed you. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, he sealed you. And so no weapon that's formed against me shall be able to prosper. And so the enemy comes to try to make you think that you don't have what it takes. Right. And because the enemy wants us to be governed by our minds. Right. See, you are not destined to allow your mind to lead you. Right. But you lead your mind. Yeah. And so what happens when you let your mind lead you, your mind will tell you, I'm tired, I'm weak, I'm broke, and all that. But you have to go off on your mind like you're in a court and say, objection. Overruled. <laughs> you have to take up your mind. I ain't, I ain't putting up with that. Why? Overruled because I'm the head and not the tail. Overruled. I'm going to come out of some overruled because I have a new mind now. And the reason why many people have not accelerated in the, in the very things of God because they have not allowed themselves to use their renewed mind when it comes down to challenges and circumstances. And so what they do, they rely on their previous responses instead of what God has said. Many times, Bishop, we find that people in the kingdom of God, amen, respond to the wrong things. Hallelujah. Instead of having a spiritual response, because let to tell your mind, since it's not running nothing, you must tell your mind it's none of your business. <laughs> Your, your mind will get you in a lot of trouble. Your mind is like a magnet. And it'll pull stuff, stuff that, that you don't need. That's why it tells us to think on these things. What things? Good stuff. Virtue. Praise. You know, uh, things of that thing, nature. And God will begin to supernaturally bless me in the name of the Lord. And because the enemy does not like uh, who I am in God, and, and God tonight is going to show us through this text two manifestations. We're going to see tonight in the text, we're going to see revelation, and then we're going to see resolve. Glory to God. <laughs> Through perseverance. Now, as you pers per persevere, God is going to bring revelation, and he's going to bring a resolve. Somebody said revelation, revelation. and resolve. resolve. Since we are the remnant now, the enemy is upset because whenever revelation comes, revelation comes to expose or to, to bring to light the things that I need to know so it can bring restoration. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because when, when it reveals to me who I am, then I can be restored in that area. And the enemy does not want my money, my mind, my mission, my maker not to come into play. But God says I'm going to bring something from above. And because this year, as we begin to lead into 2012, you're going to find out the tough people that the enemy didn't think was going to make it, going to rise to the occasion because, see, the church is not in trouble. God, I thank you. The righteous is not in trouble. All God is trying to corral to find out, do you have what it takes for the due season that's about to come? Because he tells me not to get weary and well-doing because this season is about to hit you in the face. And so you'll sit and slap somebody tonight that's about to engage in something not so much outward but inward because we people miss it because they think that it's about the stuff but it's about the savior and, and so the enemy does not want me to trust God as the, the psalmist they sung to trust him or to rely or to depend on what God is about to do and so there's a spirit that wants you to feel like quitting 
because you, you feel like it, but you don't. There are those times at the end when you just stop and don't want me to go, but I feel it, but I'm not going to stop. And so what the enemy has put in the minds of people that it's hard because it must not be God. Because when things get hard, they, they will equate hardness, amen, with God. So that's hard, and I can't do it, God. But God did not raise up whips. <laughs> you must understand that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. And everything that God put in you, praise God, is given to go public and amen, somebody's about to see it. And so and it takes revelation to take that, bring it to pass. And so what God does in perseverance, he brings certain things to pass. So, so we must persist in anything that we undertake because when we read this text, he's talking about a, a man or a church that has been overtaken in a fault. But right, he right. which is spiritual, amen, or to restore, or to mend me, to put me back together. See, I'm the duck that couldn't do this. But, but what God's going to do tonight, God's going to put areas back together that you're going to frustrate the enemy. Whether uh, it's in your finances, whether it's in your faith, whether it's in your focus, because the enemy attacks the areas that you're going to accelerate in. And so if he's attacking your money, guess what? You'll become the specialist in that. If he's attacking your faith, you'll start rising up in that. If you're an intercessor, you'll start rising. If you're in relationship, because see, blessing means God's ability to cause you to prosper in every area. Not just in my money. Jesus is not concerned about just healing you, but he wants you to be whole. Somebody say whole. And so in order for that to happen, that has to be a perseverance in me. And so as Paul is writing to the, the people of God in Galatia, he find out that the body has took a hit, glory to God. And in taking the hit, praise God, there has to be an assignment to get it back together like it need to be. Because the enemy will take advantage of your disobedience. He'll take advantage of your shortcomings. He'll try to take advantage of your swiftness. But there's somebody tonight that's given to get high his feet. Tonight, somebody's given to go to another dimension in the things of God. And so, so the body has went through these three factors here. The body has been injured. The body will be involved, and then the body will get instructions. And so the enemy is afraid because I've been injured that there's not going to be no present help. But I'm talking to people who have done well under pressure. People who still have their testimony and said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Even though the enemy attacked the areas, but he didn't get the real me. Oh, he tried to out of me, but the real me, he missed that. That's why Daniel said, you, you, you can't touch me because you, you think it's the outer. But the scripture says that they got a peep and said it, it is not the outer. We must go within his law uh -huh. to attack this brother. And so since the enemy know he can't get you out there, he comes in here hoping that he can break somebody down. He's hoping that he can take your proclivities and your shortcomings and make you feel bad enough that you won't have a comeback. But you're sitting beside somebody tonight that's getting ready to go into another dimension because you must be close. And because the enemy don't understand that God's about to bring revelation. He's about to involve himself. Yeah. He's bringing people in your life that's not, amen, looking down on you. He's not bringing people in your life, amen, that feel sorry for you. I don't need pity. I need power. <laughs> say, woe is me, but I need somebody to look through me like Jesus did Peter in the first chapter of John, verse 42. He says, the Bible says that when he comes to Peter, he says, he looks at him, and he says, um, your name should be called Cephas. Now his brother Andrew says, something's wrong with this picture because you don't know my brother like I do. He's impulsive, he's a hothead, he, he's quick with his mouth, he's a cusser and a cutter, and so you don't, you, you don't see what I see. But see, when Christ looks at you, he looks through you. He, he, he sees something that other folks don't even see. And so the enemy is upset because God saw something else in me. Look at you, he sees something else in me. He, he sees that I'm about to amen be dead. He saw he was going to deny him. He saw he was going to betray him. He also saw, amen, that he gonna, his shadow was going to pass and people were going to get delivered. He also saw that he was going to preach to the thousands. He also saw, amen, that he was going to go into prison and come out in the name of the Lord. Look at your so God can see it all. God just don't see the bad. He don't see the ugly. He sees the good too. God says, amen, that I'm able to look at you and not frown on you because you are
are getting ready to do something that's going to frustrate the enemy. You're about to do something because God is determined to find the remnant in this house tonight. Because somebody in your in your spirit, man, says, God, just reveal to me what I really need to be doing. Because I don't want to waste no more time. I don't want to waste no more hours. God, reveal. See, because revelation is not like recognition or recognizing because revelation comes from the Father. And he has to reveal to you what you can't see is in the room because there's a difference between seeking and searching. Now seeking, praise God, it, it lets me know it's here, but I don't know where it's at. But when I search, I have no clue. And so that's what the Bible says, seek me while I may be found. Because you know I'm up here, I'm in the room somewhere. Because you understand, he can be everywhere, somewhere, but nowhere. God, I thank you. And until he exposes himself, you won't even know he's sitting beside you. You know, you won't even know that he's able to do it singing and abundantly with an ask of thing. And what God does, amen, because I can't see what holiness looks like or see what righteousness looks like. He will expose himself to me so that I can begin to come a hunger and a thirst after the things of God. It's like our children. The things that we want to expose them to, we let them see that. But the things we don't want them to be exposed to, we limit them. We hurt them. And what God says, I'm, I'm going to expose you to my world because you really don't know how I flow. He said, I came to my own and my own receiving now. Look at your name. He's coming to you now. He's coming to the Gentiles. Because you must understand that Paul's assignment was to the Gentiles. Not so much because of a sin issue. No, they came. Paul came to begin to help me understand what I'm walking in. That's Paul's assignment. Not even trying to figure out, am I saved? He said, there's an enemy that's afraid that you don't know what you're walking in. And so Paul said that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering being made conformable unto his death that I may understand the height, the lift, the breadth of the sight. He says that, praise God, I, I want to show you what you're walking in, the hope of your calling. I want you to understand that there's an inheritance up in you. But because you've been distracted and because stuff want to pull you away and get in wrong fights, false fights and false battles, that when the real fight comes, I have no strength to fight. But God says, I'm getting ready to raise somebody up to Preserve them for the real fight. Because if you shouldn't swing at nothing, amen, that ain't gonna bring no result. But you got to tell yourself the next time I swing, I'm gonna get the victory in this. Because when I pray, you gotta understand the Bible said that when you pray, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. It's a timing here, and the enemy is hoping that you don't flow in what God has ordained for your life. Well, let's talk a little bit more. Now, concerning this perseverance and this revelation, because as I first stated, there is revelation and there is resolve. But I want to camp out with revelation right now because people don't know what you're walking in right now. Because your name says you don't even know what I'm walking in. If you knew everything I had in me, you would treat me a little bit different. If you knew I was fearfully and wonderfully made, you wouldn't even look at me like you're looking at me. If you out this thing in the name of the Lord, you will change your whole concept. But because you don't know this, you treat me like my past. You treat me like a cut buddy. You treat me like I'm still sinning. You treat me like I ain't coming out. But Paul says, he which is spiritual. Kinda restore this brother. Restore this body. Because the enemy is hoping that you ain't going to have a comeback. But look at somebody tell them, praise God, I'm about to have a comeback up in here.
you have to go get permission to come against you, and you got to understand you've been washed in the blood, that you more than a conqueror, that you were God decreed for your life. Somebody tell him thank you right there. Perseverance is a commitment, aggressive mindset that will maximize every effort to accomplish in the predetermined task with the willingness to exhaust all my possibilities in the times that I'm in and realize that God is about to do some supernatural. Well, let me condense that. It means the no quit, give up attitude. Look at your name, I ain't quitting. And I ain't giving up. Sitting beside a winner right now. Look at your answer. You ain't nothing but a winner. You ain't nothing but a winner. And the enemy haven't seen your best day yet. You have a good day, but you're about to have a better day. You're about to see something that God has already published on the right to say. I have not seen it here, have not heard neither. Have you entered into the heart of men the things that are prepared for them that love the Lord? Look at your answer. God is cooking it up right now. Yeah, when people look at you, they judge you by your deficiencies. What well, even Thomas Edison, they judged him by his deficiencies. Uh, you must understand Jordan, Michael Jordan, they judged him by his deficiencies. Ronald Reagan, they judged him by his deficiencies. Beethoven judged him by his deficiencies. Helen Keller judged her by her deficiencies. She says, they asked her a question, says, what would be the greatest loss for you? She says, not so much not seeing, but not having a vision. Oh, God, I thank you. And people think because you have deficiencies that they ought to feel sorry. Don't feel sorry for me. Because I'm going to take this deficiency and God will get a lot of glory out of it. I mean, what God does, he, he takes these, these shortcomings and these handicaps and these disabilities to shine. Jesus said in, in John, they said, Jesus, who sinned? Right. Who right. sinned? Right. Did mom sin? Daddy sin? No, nobody sinned. He said, I left it on him so I could get it off of him. Yeah. Hannah, Hannah was, her womb was shut up. The Bible says the Lord shut up her womb so that they imagined Penina would um, pick and make fun of her so that it would provoke her to get closer to God. Yeah. To make her, amen, keep Acknowledging God and blessing God because every time she talks, she said, I, I must be close. <laughs> but every time you talk like you do, it makes me get closer to God. That's what the test is designed to do, to get you closer to God, not away from God. It's to make you delight yourself in Him and give Him all the praise. When you hear bad news, it ought to turn some in you to say, I got to praise Him right now. <laughs> every time a lie or a rumor or insurrection or whatever come against you, it ought to make you say, I got to bless God. That's revelation that God brings to you because the enemy does not think that you can work with your deficiencies. You got some people who are not married, amen, they flow in the alone of God, single parent, anointing to do it. God, I praise you. And people look at how in the world can you do that? That's an anointing on you to do what you do. A married couples, the enemy looks at y'all and then say, you all, it don't make sense how y'all get together, how you touch and agree, how you believe God against that verse of this. But God will bring revelation to let y'all know you got to outlast this because you got to do well. See, the Bible says do well. <laughs> in other words, I'm going to do it well. Even though I'm in the test, but I'm going to still do it well. I'm going to still treat you right. I'm going to still love you. I'm going to keep in, encourage you. I'm going to do it well. Hallelujah. Because after a while, God going to say, you faithful over a few things, but I'm going to make the ruler over many. Hunda. Let your neighbor say, your two seasons are about to come here tonight. Yeah. So God intends that you 
put an effort in doing his will. What you mean, man of God? First Corinthians 15 and 58 says it like this. Don't be weary and well done. No, 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 it didn't say that. It says, praise God, amen, that um, your labor is not in vain. Yeah. It says, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work, Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. Look at your name, it says, not in vain. Not when people don't give you the applause, it, it still ain't in vain. If nobody shake your hand, it ain't in vain. If nobody ain't in vain, to you, God said, I'll do it myself. Because God is obligated to do two things. Vengeance and recompense. He said, both of them belong to me. And so he said, anytime somebody hurt you, afflict you, uh, humiliate you, God says, somebody got to pay for that. God, I thank you. Every time they didn't want to give you your promotion, they want to give you your raise, God said, don't worry about it. You ain't got to fight it. That's my job. And so when you have the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will execute and fight for you so that you don't have to do all the tough work. But we still think we got to run. That you ain't got to run nothing. Just look cute and just praise him. Because the Lord said, I'll fight it for you. God, I thank you. The Bible said that the flesh and the spirit are contrary one to the other, that you cannot do the things that you would. See, you're using energy that you don't even have to use. Why do you think he died? He said, I died so that you can live. All you got to understand, this is a done deal, not a do deal. You don't have to do nothing. Nigga, today, can you receive? And we've been accustomed to living by law, but not by grace. But see, when you get in God, all you got to do is understand he got stuff in place. If Ruth was here tonight, she'll tell you, I understand what done is because she knows how to pick it up. She said, I'm a reaper and a gleaner. I don't have to work the field. All I got to do is pick up what's in the field. Look at today, she doesn't pick it up. God, I pray. The enemy wants you to work. Am I blessed? Can I get blessed? You already blessed. The Bible said to all them that believe. In his name, he gave them power to become the sons of God. And the enemy don't want you to think you can just have this and not work real hard for it. Look at your name and your blessing is in the room right now. All you got to do is pick it up. Now, Lord, this, you must be close. That's one thing the enemy try to do is not allow you to respond in your spiritual mindset. Let me give you, I'm going to see if I'm going to give you a practice or, um, run down here and see if you're carnal or spiritual. All right. All right. Okay. I'm going to give you a little test and see where, where you're at. <laughs> Let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. <laughs> everybody else because there's some in you that says that I'm going to get back in the race of life. That's what he told him in the book of Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. He talks about how to get back in the race of life. He said, I have examples around here to let you know that if they did it, you can do it too. And so, and so we look at 
Zacharias. We look at Zacharias. I call him the short and stingy man. But the Bible said that he got tired. Live the way he said, I'm a person, I'm gonna go up in the tree. He said, I gotta get a glimpse of Jesus. I gotta go up. If I'm gonna get a glimpse of him, I gotta go up. You gotta, you gotta go up, you're gonna get a glimpse now. And, and many times the enemy wants to, hey man, put pressure on you to keep you down, but you got to go up. He represents spiritually a type of Christ because he has to stay on this tree or cross until he gives him permission to come down. You must understand many times God will put you in a, a crucifying setting to see can you get nailed. <laughs> And, and not turn out, it's your fault. <laughs> it's their fault. But you can just stay there and say, God, thank you. <laughs> I give you praise, Lord. They meant it for bad, but it's for my good. <laughs> All my prayer haters, you gotta understand how often they email me.